In today's video, I'm going to be looking at a very interesting question that came in the feedback from one of my viewers. And this was on a video that I'd made around fibromyalgia. And the question that was posed was around the rates of neurodiversity and autism and its links with fibromyalgia and whether there were any connections. I thought this video would really look at the evolving research and my understanding of the research right now. And I think this is a very important topic, something that we don't really talk about in mainstream medicine, partly because we don't understand it much at all. And the second is that this is not something we get taught or my rheumatology colleagues would get taught in medical school because autism and neurodivergence and these kind of spectrum based disorders were not something that was a really hot topic back in the 80s, 90s when we were training and qualifying. But the reality is that neurodivergence and in its all its shapes, whether that's autism or autistic spectrum disorder, is disturbingly much, much more common in society itself these days. And the research is now emerging that in conditions like fibromyalgia, like one form of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome called hypermobile EDS, there is a big representation of neurodivergent traits in these people. Indeed, I've seen a study where it states that up to 42% of neurodivergence is found in fibromyalgia and hypermobile EDS patients. So this is something we are to be very aware that when patients have fibromyalgia, there is potentially a case to be screening them for possible neurodivergence. Why does this happen? Right now, this is very unclear and there are only theories and speculation. Now, I think I must make very clear that this is still an evolving period of research and I don't want someone to feel and I don't want to create any kind of stigma that just because you've got fibromyalgia, you must have autism or vice versa, the other way around that if you have autism, you will get fibromyalgia. None of those links are clarified. But what we now know is that the proportion of autistic or neurodivergent patients who end up having widespread pain is much, much higher than the normal population. And similarly, people who have got a significant worsened or flared up situation of fibromyalgia are likely to have some neurodivergent traits. And that is also much higher. Ultimately, what is the theory about why this is happening? We understand that fibromyalgia is a situation of central sensitization, meaning that the nervous system has got sensitized due to a variety of triggers. And I've covered this in other videos of what might be the triggers that can make the central nervous system go completely off kilter. However, when it comes to autism, we know that in autism spectrum disorders or in neurodivergence, there is a fundamental change in how various circuits in the brain are wired differently. And this can happen at very critical phases of development, either in utero, when the child or baby or fetus is in utero, it can occur in the first thousand days. It can happen during periods of puberty or transition, transitioning to adulthood which means that at any of these stages, if the circuits are changed differently or pruned differently or wired differently, it can set the stage for that nervous system to be a little bit more vulnerable. And then it means that a later trigger in adult life can trigger that vulnerable nervous system to become much more sensitized. And that is how I see the connection between autism spectrum disorders and fibromyalgia and other central sensitization syndromes. Check out some of the articles and there are a lot of research that is emerging, but this is our best understanding of these conditions. I hope you found that useful and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click on the like button.